Well, this is Naveen Dikshit. I am an assistant professor of horticulture and extension specialist at UMES. I will talk about my work on biorational treatments for strawberry cultivation. I will also provide you an update on my nanotechnology work on different kinds of microorganisms I am doing for the last two years. I will also give you some updates on day neutral strawberries. Last year someone asked me, okay, you can extend the strawberry season, especially for day neutrals, for nine months using low tunnels. So what about the pollinators? They are not available during the fall season. Sorry. So sorry to interrupt you, but that's right where you keep pumping. What happened? With your Okay. So, so I conducted a small experiment to find out can we increase the population of insects during fall season. So I got wonderful results I will share. And then I will also talk about some advancement in our horticulture program at UMES. And uh, this is actually a multi-state experiment. We are conducting the same experiment at UMES at West Virginia University and in Pennsylvania. So this experiment was actually designed to manage black root rot complex. And we all know that this is caused by multiple organisms, especially Rhizoctonia, Pythium, and uh, lesion nematodes. In addition to that, later on, like Colletotrichum, Phytophthora, Fusarium, they also become the part of this disease. So it's like a syndrome, multiple organisms. And this is how plants look like. This is healthy plant and this is infected plant. And you can see loss of fibrous roots. And finally, the roots appears like a tail of a mice or a rat. So what are the reasons? Most of the time, it's cultural practices which can cause accumulation of inoculum in our soil. For example, perennial production system or matted root system in which we cultivate strawberries for more than one year or two years. Then you pick system, why you pick system? Because we want to attract customers, right? And we specially choose a particular location where people can see, and year after year we grow strawberries at the same location. Third reason is no crop rotation. And uh, policy change, there is a ban on use of methyl bromide. So some, these are some of the reasons which are responsible for this BRRC. So in this pro project, we took three different strategies to manage black root rot complex. So one of them was the use of antagonist microorganisms like Pseudomonas bacillus. Then we also use biofumigation strategy in which we use members of Brassica family, for example, mustard, because roots of these plants, they release different types of isothiocyanates, nitriles, dimethyl sulfides, all these compounds are actually antimicrobial in nature. So they can take care of some of these fungi. Then we also used anaerobic soil disinfection. If anybody wants to use anaerobic soil disinfection, three things are required. First of all, a carbon source in the soil. Why carbon source? Because carbon will act as a food for the microorganisms. Then we have to create anaerobic conditions. We can create that easily by flooding and then we have to prevent gaseous exchange. That means we will use tarp or plastic to cover everything so that we can maintain anaerobic condition for a longer period of time. So these are some three strategies we used. These are the biorational treatments. Biorational means there will be a minimum impact on environment or on the health of humans or animals. So. We use media from SunGrow Sun Grow Horticulture Professional Mix. We posturize it and use as it is provided by the commercial market. Then we use beneficial microbes from TerraGrow. So it's a blend of bacteria, fungi, and nutrients, mostly bacillus species. So we grew plugs using these TerraGrow and uh, posturize and non-posturize mixture. Then we planted these plugs under three different conditions. For example, control soil in which we didn't spray anything, whatever is soil available in our field. Then we produce soil using anaerobic soil, in, anaerobic soil disinfection in which we use rice bran as a source of carbon. And then we use for biofumigation purpose mustard caliente 199. So 
ASD means anaerobic soil disinfection. In future slides, BF means biofumigation. Control means non-treated. PT means posturize and treated. Treated means we use probiotics. We dip the roots in probiotic solution. So this is our design. So we have six treatments. Variety, we use this Chandler. We have 60 replicates. Bed length was 20 feet. Bed width was three feet. Bed height seven inch, plan to plan distance is one feet in the center of the bed. We use Terragro at a rate of one ounce per 100 gallon of water. Rice bran, we use eight tons per acre and mustard 11 pounds per acre. So this is our design and these are the full forms of all the six treatments. So posturized treated, non-treated soil, posturized treated in ASD soil, untreated in ASD soil, non-posturized treated in non-treated soil, <laughs> untreated roots in biofumigated soil, then untreated plugs in non-treated soil. So these are the six treatments we used. So we planted mustard in June, it was late, but one can plant in the last weeks of April. The only thing is one have to mow the mustard before flowering. Otherwise what will happen, this mustard may become weed in your field. So we grew it and then we <coughs> mow it down in our field. Then we added rice bran during August because we planted our plex in September. For this process, you need at least three weeks in hand. That means we need three weeks of anaerobic conditions. So we use simply rake and uh, incorporated the rice bran. And then we covered it with the plastic mulch and then we released water. And then we waited for the three weeks almost. And after the three weeks, then we started planting our plugs. So three weeks is an important time according to literature. It will generate more toxic compounds and kill some pathogenic bacteria. But there is a possibility they may also kill good bacteria also. And I got this rice bran from Texas. This is organic in nature. So we planted in September and then by December we covered everything. So we took our fir first measurements in November after 45 days after planting and we tried to look if, if there is any changes in vegetative growth just after planting within one month. So we observed certain changes. For example, if you will look at this graph, so on x-axis we have all the treatments and on y-axis we have number of runners per plant. So we observed, yes, during the treatment where we dip the plugs in probiotics, these plants, they generally produce more number of runners in comparison to control or other treatments. So that means there is something going on. Same thing is here, number of leaves, so you can see under treatment where we dip the Plants in probiotics, there is an increase in number of leaves. Then number of leaves per plant, look here, this is at 220 days. So I didn't find any change in the number of leaves after almost three or four, after five or six months. So initially I observed the changes in the vegetative growth when we use these probiotics. But later on, I didn't find any change. All the treatments, they showed same type of results. Plant height, not much changes in the plant height except in the treatment, because if you can see the standard error thing, so they are almost near to each other. <coughs> then plant height at 220 days, no change in all the six treatments, plant height remained the same. This is interesting. So we also counted number of weeds per hole because the function of our treatment ASD and biofumigation is to suppress the germination of seeds. And we observed some interesting observations. So treatment three and treatment five, this is ASD, where we use anaerobic soil disinfection and BF means biofumigation. So we observed less number of weeds. That is after 220 days after planting, but this is the next slide and look here. These treatments become erratic. So there is a possibility these treatments work up to certain time period or maybe after certain time, new weeds germinate and these treatments are not able to control those germination events. 
with different different types of weeds. That's what we I extract information from this graph because number of weeds are even less in control in comparison to biofumigation or ASD. So maybe next year when we will repeat it, we got something new. But yeah, this is difficult to justify this graph. Then number of flowers. There is no change in the number of flowers over a period of six weeks in all the six treatments. And you can see here, all those numbers were almost same. Then we evaluated the yield and we find, yes, there is some difference in the yield in treated plants where we dip the roots in probiotic solution. However, the yields in the treatments are comparable, but in all the treatments, the yield is higher than control plants. So this is our control, untreated and non-treated soil. So yield is higher in all other. So in summary, we can say probiotic treatment showed some improvement in vegetative growth during the earlier period, just after 45 days or something like that. But at later stages, these treatments didn't bring anything significant. ASD and BF, of course, they suppress the weed again during the early timings. Later stages, there is no effect that might be due to germination of a different kinds of weeds. And uh, the effect of these treatments is already nullified by that time. This is the most important thing. The major limitation of this work was we ran this experiment in non strawberry growing field. That means my field was already free from disease, but that was the requirement. They want an organic field, and we never, we never grow any strawberry in that field. So there is a possibility, if we will run this experiment in a field where there is a lot of inoculum or a lot of fungal infection, so we definitely get some better results and better explanations. So there is a possibility, the experiments we are running at West Virginia or in Pennsylvania, if they are running on contaminated or infected soils, we may get some better results. Any questions? Your ASD, what's the ASD? Standard? AS is anaerobic soil disinfection. That was what you did with the rice, right? Yes, sir. What was the variety of strawberry you had? Chandler. It's pretty good. It's a June beer. What was the variety? Chandler, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chandler. Chandler. You can ask me more questions later on. So last year, someone asked me, OK, you, Naveen, you are growing day neutral strawberries. But during the fall season, how you will provide more pollinators? So what I did last year. So I grew pumpkin all around my strawberry field. And these are not June bearers. These are day neutrals. So why, why I selected pumpkin? Because look here. Day neutral strawberries, they are also day neutrals. If you will provide sufficient temperature, they will keep providing flowers. Same thing is with pumpkin. They are also day neutral in nature. They will keep producing flower from April to November. Second thing is, anther of the strawberry is yellow in color. Same thing is here. Flowers in pumpkin, yellow in color. Honeybees can attract to yellow color. So both are yellow. There is a possibility they may promote pollination events. Another thing is they have very large trichomes, hair-like structure. So initially I designed this experiment for pollination, but what I observed, it's a double advantage, I didn't find any deer damage to my strawberries. This is almost 10 to 20 feet in width, all these vines. So we did scouting for fecal material. We didn't find any fecal material in our strawberry field. No deer damage or animal damage. In fact, one can have economic advantage because you are growing giant pumpkin and I saw it was one, $11 each last year. Second thing is more number of pollinators. So this is how I look like. There is no damage. This is October 4 and the same thing. This is without fence where I didn't grow any pumpkin. So they were enjoying each 100 feet row per day. So this is how it looked like. So on x-axis we have month. And on why we have number of pollinators. So every morning we were in the field and count number of insects. So 
these are in pairs blue means no fence no fence means no pumpkin around the strawberry plot orange means there is a pumpkin vines around my strawberry plot and you can see the number of visitors are more in plots which are surrounded by pumpkin this is my work on nanotechnology i am showing it for last two years so very common disease in my field is leaf spot of a strawberry this is how it looks like a small lesions later on these spots or lesions fuse with each other and finally the entire leaf may die so i isolate this fungus and then what i did i made different kinds of petri dish plates and uh, these are control plates and all these are infused with nanoparticles i use nano zinc oxide 10 to 30 nanometer in diameter and you can see the diameter fungal growth is maximum this is just our 24 hours so i conducted it on 19th of february so if you will see if you will move from left to right there is a decline in the diameter of the fungal growth and you can see here also if you have highest concentration of nanoparticles 20 millimolar very little growth of the pda this leaf spot fungus so we can control fungus using nanoparticles and this is interesting this is generic e coli e coli is in our body enjoying happily but there are certain strains which are toxic so you can see in the first two plates this is these are the colonies just after 24 hour so you can see these bacterial cells these are called colony forming units so one cell can multiply and give you a colony and look here this is control just after 24 hours there is not a single cell in all these nanoparticles infused petri dishes so just imagine if this thing work and somehow we can find a non toxic nanoparticles for human health or our soil health and we are growing leafy greens just spray and after 24 hours if there is any e coli there will be nothing so if we can manage it better fire blight ervinia mylovara exactly the same result control and control plus x after 24 hours in one ml there may be more than 1 million billion cell in these experiments but treatment after nanoparticles not a single cell these are not cells these are bubbles actually so all these plates are clean 100% death for fire blight bacteria leaf spot in peaches again the same thing 24 hours you can see the colonies here all plates were clean 100% mortality so this is some of my work at umes so last year we established four mini orchard in the community in fruitland eden princes and in stockton and actually these orchards are looking much better than my so i am so jealous sometimes so i establish a multi variety orchard at umes we have more than 40 different kinds of variety same is multi variety vineyard we have 40 different kinds of grapes we are going to build a trellis pretty soon we are going to build five high tunnels to screen large number of strawberry varieties using biochar because our soils are already rich in phosphorus so the target is can we minimize the use of different type of fertilizer using biochar in biochar there are spaces in the particles and microbes can live so we will also study is if if bio, biochar can change the microbial population and can promotes the growth of good bacteria for our plant growth and development next thing is we are this is is a panicrus this is actually a weed but in midwest growers are using it for biodiesel so in association with virginia tech we are going to transform this plant so that it can accumulate higher amount of phosphorus so that is on chart for this year and uh, we are creating more equipment in our lab so maybe in future i can present more data from morphology to molecular biology so we are doing a trying to do a different different kind of work yes any any question regarding the biorational treatments yes or anything well this is about your cover crop so if if you have a cover crop that's going to absorb more phosphorus is it going to release that phosphorus as it decomposes the thing is then we have to find it where we are partitioning it 
it's in the seed section or into the leaf section or into the root section. So our targeted can be somehow mobile it or mobilize it towards seeds. Then we can harvest it. Otherwise, if you will incorporate it, then the same thing is there. It's just cycling of phosphorus. Well. You gave this talk last year, and nanotechnology hasn't probably changed any, has it? Nothing. I'm asking that question. No change, exactly the same thing. It would be wonderful to see more research. Yeah. The, main, the main thing is more work is required to study toxicity on humans or our ecosystem. In fact, I am using zinc oxide, but there are certain papers and uh, they showed it may be harmful for human beings. They study kidney function on different type of cell toxicity studies. But what I am thinking is there is another nanoparticle called chitosan. It's actually derived from chitin, from the shells of the crab or from the insect. This is a biodegradable nanoparticle. So the target is if chitosan can work as equal as nano zinc oxide is working, so that will be that will be good because it, it's biological in origin because it's we are deriving it from the insect and it's biodegradable. So maybe in future it can be approved and the best thing is if we can control E. coli within 24 hours, that is a great achievement for us. Yes, before harvest, just a spray. There you go, it's ready. Phasma is gone. <laughs> we can manage E. coli. Yeah, but the thing is, we have to find out something which is non-toxic for our ecosystem. Okay. Any questions? Maybe next year. Yeah. Was that zinc oxide you were using? Yes. So I'm not only using zinc oxide. I'm also using nano sulfur, nano clay and a wide range of nanoparticles. You're basically to using some fungicides. Oh, no, I... No, I mean, it's in outside the salt or act like fungicides. Yeah. So, I, low levels. so I'm using all these nanoparticles for insect management, fungus, bacteria, and it works effectively on all different kinds of bacteria and fungi and insects. Anything. And then we are also using different range. For example, I just showed you 10 to 30 nanometers. It's then 30 to 70, 100 and 200 nanometer. Because in certain countries, even under organic horticulture, 200 nanometer is okay. In some, 100 nanometer is okay. But some in organic horticulture, they're not allowed to use nanotechnology or nanoparticles in cultivation. So that's why I'm using different range. So we never know what will be for us in future. Thank you. Okay.